Well, now, a controversial Pakistani preacher causes a commotion in Afghanistan after endorsing suicide attacks there. Maulana Hafiz Muhammad Tahir Ashrafi says suicide attacks are permitted in Afghanistan as long as U.S. forces remain there. But he's remained silent on attacks against U.S. troop presence in other Muslim countries. His comments come after the Afghan government proposed a plan for regional religious leaders to get together to condemn suicide attacks. The Afghan initiative was rejected by the Pakistani preacher. Pro-Taliban Pakistani preachers wield immense influence in the political scene of Afghanistan. To discuss this more, I'm joined from uh, Kansas by Liaghat Ali Khan, professor at Washburn University. Welcome to the program, sir. Professor, uh, first of all, uh, this preacher has uh, uh, permitted suicide attacks in Afghanistan. Why only Afghanistan and not other Muslim countries who uh, host uh, uh, U.S. forces? Well, I don't know, you know, what kind of analysis uh, this particular cleric uh, went through. But I do want to say that Islamic law uh, develops through free market of uh, opinions. The jurists uh, all over in the Islamic world are free to give their opinions and people are, you know, at liberty to follow them or not. So a jurist in Pakistan can give a fatwa for a situation anywhere in the Muslim world. So that is probably okay. But whether that fatwa should be followed or not is, is it is a different question. And of course, uh, what impact would this ruling have on the overall security situation of both Pakistan and Afghanistan? Well, I think this uh, preacher uh, is pretty influential and the council of scholars uh, that he leads uh, is also very influential. And it seems like uh, the Taliban on both sides of the border, they agree with the preacher. So it seems like uh, they don't in their fight against the U.S. And of course, uh, the main question at the end of the day is that uh, who will benefit from this, uh, from this uh, uh, ruling by the, fa the fatwa, the ruling? I don't think anybody is going to benefit. It seems like there will be more killing uh, because the fatwa justifies the suicide bombing. So it seems like the violence will escalate at least it will not diminish it until uh, Afghanistan is free of occupation. So I don't think anybody is going to benefit from it. But at the end of the day, we see that the, uh, uh, the casualties are only civilians. Yes, I mean, that's the most unfortunate part of uh, this war, that both from the Taliban side as well as from the occupying forces side, uh, violence is committed... Uh, against the civilians. And a lot of innocent children and women and old people have been killed uh, because they are just, you know, caught in the crossfire. So that is the unfortunate part of uh, this war. And how much of an impact would this have on the, uh, on the targeted killing of, on the recent uh, sectarian strife that took place in Pakistan, the attacks against the Shia community? I think once you allow suicide bombing, and there is some legitimacy to it, then people begin to use it for even indefensible causes. See, it is one thing to have suicide bombing in an occupation situation where you don't have much weapons to fight the enemy. And it is quite another thing that you begin to have suicide bombing against other Muslim uh, groups or Muslim sects. I see that is the unfortunate part of uh, legitimizing suicide bombing as, as a lawful weapon. Because many say that uh, the United States might take advantage of this and to justify its presence in these war-torn countries. I do not think so, because suicide bombing is not new. So I think the United States is very familiar with the fact that the Taliban and other resistance groups would use suicide bombing as one of the weapons uh, against them. So I'm not sure suicide bombing is a factor in the U.S. decision to stay in Afghanistan any longer. All right. We'll leave it there for the time. Many thanks to Liagat Ali Khan, professor at Washburn University from Kansas. Thanks for your time there, sir.